the Gerson Witness 2311. Let's check it out. Because of the popularity of the 1911, uh, STI a few years ago designed the 2011. Uh, and this was what they call the wide body. Had a double stack magazine and yet it had all the same controls and features of a 1911. And it was really geared more toward competitive shooters. I shot 1911s for competition and IPSC matches, combat matches for years. And yet while I really love the 1911, the one big deficiency is the mag capacity you know, seven to eight rounds in 45, 10 rounds in nine. But when STI came out with the 2011, they were pretty expensive. Uh, and then they became staccato, and that really became expensive and really out of the reach of most gun buyers. Uh, since that time, we've seen some pretty good offerings coming from Springfield Armory with the Prodigy, Bull Armory with their SAS TAC-2, and also a number of other real premium brands. But today we're gonna take a look at the Grisson. Uh, this is the Witness 2311. Uh, it's in 9mm, but they also make it in 45 and even in 10mm. You have a 17 round mag capacity in 9, has all the features of your 2011 style pistols, and yet it comes in at a really reasonable price. In fact, under $1,000 retail. So we're going to give it a good look. The big thing about Gerson is that they have put out a lot of really high quality pistols over the past few years. And so I was really excited and surprised to see the Gerson 2311. European American Armory is the importer of the Gerson firearms. And they got in touch with me just recently, asked if I would be willing to take a look at it and do a review. And we really appreciate EAA Corporation for sending the Gerson Witness 2311. All right, guys, the Gerson Witness 2311. This is a 2011 style pistol. Uh, you know, it comes in at a much more budget-friendly price. Let's go ahead and check to make sure our guns are unloaded. We're going to check the uh, magazine's empty and slides empty. And this is the MC model. It is the 4.25-inch barrel. Uh, they do make a 5-inch, which is a government size, and then they make a 6-inch barrel. But we have an aluminum uh, housing right here. That's the receiver that comes down, and then we have a polymer grip shell piece that comes here. Now, this was honestly perfected by STI and then later became staccato. Now, one of the things about these magazines uh, is that it only comes with one magazine which I would really like to have seen more, but these magazines are not that inexpensive. But this is really, I believe, made by Checkmate, which makes the same magazines that the Staccato uses. Uh, and then also, uh, this will also use the Springfield Armory Prodigy Mags. Uh, so, and those will probably be a little bit less expensive. So it gives you some options uh, with magazines. But again, 17 rounds, stainless, fits into the gun really well. One of the big things about this particular handgun is that it is that 2011 style, which everybody uh, lately has been kind of gravitating to, or it's becoming more popular. Um, and one of the big things that held this one back was because of just the price. And there are a number of different companies other than Staccato that make these. Uh, and again, it's like having a custom-made handgun. I know when I used to do a lot of IPSC matches, 
the guys that had the race guns and they had it all tricked out and they had spent thousands of dollars on those. And really that's where your staccato comes in. Is this a race gun? It's an incredible firearm, but again, it's $3,000 plus. Uh, here, and I'm going to go ahead and talk about the price because that's a big plus for this handgun. It's under $1,000. Uh, it's $99.99 retail, full retail. When you get to your dealer, you can get it for less. <laughs> which makes it even more appealing. Now, what is the big deal with the 2011 style pistol? Well, we have a Springfield Armory emissary here. Uh, and this has, uh, it's 9mm, it has the 10 rounds. And it has those standard, and this is a Wilson magazine. But the big thing is, it has a small round capacity. And so we're going with 17 rounds here. But you know, you're going to have a thicker grip. I mean, there's just no way around it. But it gives you 17 rounds compared to 10 rounds of 9mm. And then I believe they do a 45 and a 10mm. Uh, the 45 is 11 plus 1. Whereas in your standard 1911, uh, traditionally it's been 7. Now, pretty much across the board, it's 8 rounds. So it makes it a much more effective self-defense option. And one thing too though about the 1911, it's so thin. Now this particular the emissary has these ultra thin grips on it so it makes it really thin. But now the Gerson has all the bells and whistles of most of your 2011 style pistols. And you know you have your accessory rail, you have front cocking serrations, uh, we have ambidextrous safety and they are extended, high ride beaver tail with a memory notch, uh, we have a delta style hammer which is skeletonized, Trigger's been skeletonized. We'll take a look closer at that in a minute. Uh, and then we have our mainspring housing, and we have a magwell. Uh, and again, that texturing, guys, it just, it doesn't bite your hand, but when you grip it, it's got a really excellent feel to it. I mean, it just fills your hand, and yet, I mean, it is just such a sweet shooting gun. And that's one of the things about the 2011 series is that it really does fill your hand uh, and it gets to a lot of the polymer striker fire pistol grips that double stack feel to it but then again it just retains all the 1911 controls one of the things about the 2011s or the 1911s is it is a single action pistol and that means that when i pull the trigger there's no action uh, the hammer has to be in the rear position so typically what happens is we bring back our slide and it brings the hammer in the rear position and now you're ready to shoot. Um, and so we also have our safety that we can put up. Now it's cocked and locked. So to fire this handgun, if it's holstered, is all I've got to do is drop my safety and then I'm ready to fire. And typically, because it is single action, the trigger is really nice. And 1911s are known for having the best triggers uh, of any handgun because it is that really crisp single action pull. Now we're going to look at the trigger pull on this one in a minute and we're going to weigh it out. This one comes with a red dot. So these are already red dot ready. And I believe there are options where this just comes that way. When I got it from uh, EAA Corporation, this was included and I've seen some on others. Uh, but you know, you'll notice that there's no rear sight, which is not really one of my favorites. I like to retain some kind of rear sight on the back. Uh, but here in the sight, we have fiber optic rods, and they line up with that front dot. So I really like that as well. Now, we have your dovetailed front sight in, uh, so that way you can change that out if you want. Uh, we do have a bushing system, and we have a full-length guide rod. And when we break it down, we'll get a good look at that. Uh, your standard uh, slide release or slide stop. The four-slot Picatinny rail, it is aluminum, so it's not going to be the polymer. The polymer actually comes down as a piece here. You can see it overlay over the aluminum. This is a Cerakote finish, but it's a matte Cerakote. And honestly, it has a really nice look to it. I mean, it doesn't have any kind of sheen or anything. It's just kind of a matte finish, but it really is a very clean finish. Uh, also, here at the back, uh, you'll notice that the slide fits very well to the frame. I mean, the fitting, as far as movement goes, there is, I cannot feel any perceived movement. Um, the extractor is fit well to the back of the slide. Uh, when it comes to the front, very well fit. Of course, that barrel bushing is going to hold that barrel and that slide in, and it's going to lock it in, which makes it nice. But 
very little movement even with the frame in the slide. So really the fit and finish on this gun uh, is well done. And you know, a lot of times with these budget firearms, they cut corners. Uh, now these are made in Turkey. Uh, they're imported by the EAA Corporation, is European American Armory. And we're seeing some really exceptional firearms coming out of Turkey. And just for comparison, we have the Springfield Armory Prodigy. This is more of a full-size 1911 slide. Uh, but this has been, for me, an excellent gun. There were some, a few issues with the magazines, and from what I understand, you know, all of those have been fixed. Uh, but for us, honestly, at the range, we had no problems with this handgun. It shoots extremely well. Uh, one thing I will show you is when you pull back on the slide, it is super slick. I mean, it glides right on the slide. Uh, when it comes to the Gerson, uh, it's slick. But it's not glass smooth, but yet, I mean, it's still really, a, you know, your typical 1911 feel to it. And the price of the Prodigy has come down considerably below the STIs or the Staccato at $1,499. Uh, if you get the Optic, it adds a couple of hundred dollars. Market price will typically be less, but we're still up over $500 over the Gerson Witness. Then we have the Bull Armory, and this is the SAS-2 TAC 4.25. Same barrel length, same configuration with the Bull Armory. And honestly, this to me is one of the best 2011 style pistols out on the market. Bull Armory has really come on strong, making some excellent firearms. Uh, this really compares to the Staccato, in my opinion, even more than the Springfield. Uh, but the price is $1,760. Is it worth it? Yes, it's incredible. But is it affordable? <laughs> you know, that's one thing. I mean, yes, just because a Lamborghini is worth what it is doesn't mean you can go out and buy one. Same thing here. We have a really solid 2011 type pistol. Uh, you know, this is a little smoother. There's some things about it that, to me, I mean, I love this handgun. So I'm a little biased. But then again, you've got your Prodigy. And, you know, there are some things about it that exceed... The Gerson, as far as the slickness of the action, a few things like that, the trigger, and we'll look again at that. But guys, you know, you're spending, you know, $800 more for something like this, which is an excellent firearm, but you can bring it in with the Gerson for under $1,000, and it just makes a great budget choice, and yet it has a lot of quality to it. And the weight on the Witness 2311, 31.3 ounces. When it comes to the trigger, it is curved. Uh, there is no adjustment at the bottom, uh, which you see on some, and I do like that styling. But we have a definite wall, just some take up to a wall. A little bit of stacking, and then we have the brake. Uh, the brake is decent. It's not super crisp, but uh, we're gonna check reset right there. Reset's really fast. We're gonna check the trigger pull weight. about seven pounds and honestly I have done this a number of times ahead of time and it's coming in consistently at that seven pound that's just a touch under. Big thanks to Fiocchi for sponsoring our ammo all made in the USA one of the number one suppliers of ammunition in the country and uh, these are 17 round magazines they only come with one uh, but there are other magazines that fit this gun. Taking the Gerson Witness 2311C out to the range, you know, we're testing a gun that really has been really expensive for most people. Uh, with the Staccato, you know, even the Bull Armory or the Springfield Armory, I mean, they're getting that price really up there. And that's one of the great things about the Gerson. It's a good quality pistol, and yet we're coming in at about half the price. Uh, and with the Staccato, it's even less. But we have a 17 round magazine. Uh, these are compatible uh, with Staccato for that matter. And the Springfield Armory Prodigy uh, just has a lot of bells and whistles. Uh, we have the Dury sight on here. Actually, it's holding up really well. But it's got that 1911 feel with a 17 plus one mag capacity. Real slick, real easy to, to just put in there. Of course, the ambidextrous safeties.
One thing I really love about it with this sight is that it has fiber optic rods at the back and it mates up with the front sight. So even though it doesn't have a rear sight, uh, you know, you still have a backup sight. And that's, that's pretty cool in itself. Uh, definitely has that 1911 grip angle. You've got a accessory rail here uh, and it just shoots really well. I mean, there's something about a 1911, guys, and with the 2011 and that mag capacity, it just makes a huge difference. Easy controls, easy to get to. I mean, if you're looking for a 2011-style pistol, uh, but you don't want to break the bank, I mean, this is just a great choice. Now for disassembly, we're going to drop our magazine, check the chamber, the gun's empty. Uh, what I like to do is to bring down my recoil spring and guide rod and then just turn our bushing. You want to turn it to about 9 o'clock, it's under spring tension so be careful when we're releasing this. There it goes. You have your recoil spring plug. We have a flat recoil spring which typically aids in recoil management. That's something about the physics. And we're gonna bring it back to that first notch and then just push through right here on your slide stop. Now, because this is a little bit thicker, sometimes it's a little more difficult just to pull out your slide stop, but as you can see, it comes right out. And then we're just gonna bring the slide right out. No pulling of the trigger or anything like that. Now, it has, again, a full-length guide rod. Uh, but this guide rod is more of a traditional type guide rod. Some have that uh, larger diameter right here, but this has just your standard. Now take your barrel bushing and push it all the way to about 4 to 5 o'clock, and then you can bring that out. There are keys inside the slide that hold the bushing into place. There we go. Now it is a very short bushing. I don't think I've ever seen one that short. Typically they're about double that size, but it works. And then we take our barrel, drop our barrel link, and just push the barrel out the front of the slide. Now, I do want to mention that uh, when I got this gun, it had a lot of oil with it, and honestly, I did not clean it, which is typically what I do. I like to just shoot the guns as they are. There we go. Here we have our 4.25 inch barrel. Uh, we have our link right here, and then we have a feed ramp uh, that's built into the barrel. Inside the slide, you can see, I mean, it's very well machined. It's one thing I've noticed with the Gerson pistols. And then here, your 1911 style um, interior, and of course, that's just typical. Well, guys, that's all you need to do to field strip. This is standard 1911 takedown, disassembly. First thing we're gonna do is take our slide and our barrel, and we're gonna just drop the barrel from the front, making sure that this little link is down and then we're gonna put it on. Again, it's a nice snug fit into the slide. I like that. Next, we're gonna take that barrel link again. The barrel link's probably one of the biggest issues with putting together your 1911. And then we're gonna drop in our guide rod. Uh, now we're gonna take and put this over our frame and we're gonna make sure that we see this barrel link. And you wanna match it up to this hole. And that is where your uh, takedown lever goes into place. Now you can see it right there. You want to just make sure that it's open and ready for your slide stop. And we just drop it directly in in this position. You want to have it in the down position. And then bring it back, your slide, to where that little notch is over your, the square. Lift up your slide stop. One good thing about this is because of the polymer, you're not going to get the real idiot scratch of scratching your frame. Uh, but you don't want to scratch your polymer either. And there you go. Just push it in. A little detent holds that into place and it snaps right into place. Now, don't put in your recoil spring because it's difficult to get your barrel bushing going. Now, there's a small notch right here and we're going to go again to about that four to five o'clock. The notch will drop down, lift it up just a little bit and let that bushing just go to the nine o'clock position. Then we're going to drop in our recoil spring then we take our plug and put it over it, and then we just depress it, holding it good and firm. 
and then bring back your barrel bushing, just like that. And it'll snap right into place like that. And we're going to be good to go. Comes in a nice hard plastic case with Gerson on the front. So we open it up. Of course, you have your pistol. You do have a limited lifetime warranty. And that is important, especially with guns that are imported. And EAA Corporation has been around for a long time. So here we have the pistol. Uh, here we have a tool to be able to change out your red dot. And this is actually pretty cool because it tells you the direction that you need to go. So you take your screwdriver, put it in here, and when it goes to windage or uh, elevation, you can just dial it in and there's no guesswork. Here we have our rear sight and we have our base plate cover and then we have two screws and you have a small wrench. Of course, at the top, we have our safety and we have a cleaning rod. Now, again, the price is $999 manufacturer suggested retail dealer price typically is less at your local gun shop, which is by far the least expensive 2011 platform currently on the market. Now, as far as pros and cons, the fit and finish is top notch. Uh, the grip texturing is very well done all the way around the pistol. Uh, using your Checkmate magazines, uh, which are top-notch mags, I mean, that is a huge plus, being compatible. And again, you can use your Springfield Prodigy mags, which are typically a little bit less. I think these mags run around the $60 range off of the EAA website. Nice high-ride beaver tail, ambidextrous safeties, Delta-style hammer, uh, the one-piece guide rod. Of course, it is more of the traditional lines but it fits really well frame to slide fit. Comes with a red dot, which makes it nice, and I'm sure there are models that do not have that, but it is optics ready with the Shield RMSC footprint. Front and rear cocking serrations. Um, you know, guys, it is an excellent handgun right out of the box. Uh, what are some cons? Uh, the trigger is okay. I mean, it's not fantastic. It's better than most of your striker fire polymer frame pistols. Uh, but as far as your 1911 trigger, uh, you know, there's a lot out there that are better than this. And honestly, you may be able to switch this out with a different trigger because it is compatible with your 1911 parts or at least your 2011 trigger because of the trigger bow going around the magazine. But really, after shooting that a while, it just gets better. I mean, we put 500 rounds through it on range day and it just did very well. That was another thing. There were no malfunctions whatsoever. So it's a very reliable gun. Uh, one magazine, that is a little bit of a con. Uh, it's a great magazine, but, you know, that does keep the price down. But if you have other 2011 magazines, it's going to be compatible, and that's going to be a benefit. Uh, nice magwell as well. The really short barrel bushing is different, uh, but it seems to work just fine, and really, just because it's longer, I don't know that that's a liability whatsoever. But overall, for the price, this is a gem. And if you're looking for a 2011 style pistol and you just don't have, you know, $1,500 to $3,000, $4,000, uh, that's what they're typically running. So this really brings it into a much more affordable price. And it gives you all the 1911 controls and yet 17 plus one in the magazine. So guys, if you love the 1911, but you just really want that extra mag capacity, but haven't been able to afford the standard 2011 style pistols. Uh, this gives us a great option and very reliable, all the bells and whistles. And while it's not quite a staccato, it comes in at less than a third of the price and just makes it more affordable uh, to take it out to the range and give you a lot more money for ammunition. And again, a big thank you to EAA Corporation for sending the Witness 2311 for this review. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.
Big thanks to Fioki for sponsoring our ammo. What the heck? What the heck? What the heck, heck? Ah! Put the gun up. Oh my gosh, why are you so far forward now? Move back a little. Not that much, too much. There you go. Bruh. <laughs> I mean, it's super thin compared, and I hadn't done my safety check. Stop doing that. Just stop. To really like the 1911 system. Okay, it's not a system. Is it a system, the 1911 system?